In this video, I'm going to show you five simple steps to follow if you'd like to achieve financial independence and retire early in Australia. Most of the FIRE content you see on the internet are very American based, so this one will be more relatable to everyday Aussies like yourself. So if you're interested, let's get started. So firstly, what is FIRE? FIRE stands for Financial Independence Retire Early. It was a term first introduced in this book in 1992, but the FIRE movement only started getting really popular in the last 5 to 10 years. The whole concept of FIRE is to work hard when you are younger to save enough money to invest into income producing assets like shares. Then once you've accumulated a large enough portfolio, you can withdraw about 4% from your portfolio every year to cover all your living expenses. This will allow you to retire early completely or gives you the option to only work on projects that are meaningful to you without having to worry about money. So basically, the FIRE movement will help you escape the rat race that is the 9 to 5 grind and live life on your own terms doing more of what you want to do. So here are the five simple steps to achieve FIRE in Australia. Step 1. Calculate your FIRE number. The first thing you need to do is calculate the total amount you need to retire early. This is your FIRE number. To calculate this, we use the 25 rule. The general rule of thumb is to multiply your annual expenses by 25. It's easiest to break this down per month. So go ahead and write down all your monthly expenses that you'll need like housing, transport, groceries, utility bills and other expenses. Let's go through an example together. According to this article, the average Australian spends $2,835 per month. So if we multiply that by 12, we get around $34,000. So let's just round that up to $35,000. So this is our annual expense for this example. Let's multiply this by 25, which gives us $875,000. This is your FIRE number. This is how much you need to save up. We can now apply another rule, which is the 4% rule. Say you have a $875,000 portfolio in shares. You can withdraw 4% of it every year to cover all your expenses. The idea is your remaining portfolio will continue to grow enough on average every year so you never run out of money for the rest of your life. So 4% of 875,000 is 35,000 which is the annual expense that we previously calculated. Now please note this is a very simplified calculation. I'm just using the average Australian expense. For your own situation, this number may be too low to live on, but I guess it depends on where you live in Australia. Obviously, a major city will be more expensive than a regional town. Or who knows, maybe you want to move to a cheaper country like Thailand or the Philippines, but still be funded by the strong Aussie dollar. This way, you don't need as much money. Also in the calculation, I am not taking into account taxes, inflation or other unforeseen emergency expenses. Please feel free to play around with the numbers and include a margin of safety to protect yourself from any hidden costs like taxes, inflation and emergency expenses that are out of your control. Also, you can just use a bit of common sense. For example, if the stock market is going through a recession during one of your retirement years, you can adjust your expenses accordingly or pick up a casual job or side hustle to make up the difference. Please remember, life is unpredictable, but there is always something you can do to adapt to a bad situation. So use your common sense, guys. Step two, save and earn money. So this is where the fun begins. Now that you know your FIRE number, you just need to get there. Sounds simple enough, right? So how are you gonna get there? The principle of FIRE is very easy to understand. It's applying it that's the hard part. Your main goal in this step is to increase your savings so you can invest as much and as quick as possible to reach your FIRE number. You can increase your savings in two ways. One, reduce your expenses, and two, increase your income. Now this may be a controversial take, but I think increasing your income is way more effective than reducing your expenses. You simply can't save your way to retirement. I know it's a bit of a taboo thing to say because I'm sure growing up, most of us were taught to save, save, save. I come from an Asian immigrant family, so this was instilled into my brain from a young age. The problem is, there is a cap on how much you can save, but there is no cap on how much you can earn. Getting a 10k salary increase is more impactful than saving your $5 takeaway coffees every day. Say you sacrifice your $5 coffee every day for a year. What a horrible thought, right? But stay with me. That is $1,825 that you saved. Whereas if you got a 10k pay rise, that is 10k. You just saved $8,175 more and you got to enjoy your takeaway coffee every day. That's a win-win. You might be thinking, Brian, that's an easy thing to say, but how do I get a 10k pay rise? Well, here's a secret that you probably already know. Your employer will most likely never give you a big pay rise if you don't ask them for one. You may get a small increase here and there to match inflation, but nothing more than that. So at your annual performance review, list down all the things you have achieved this year and ask for a raise. The worst they can say is no. And if they do say no, then you ask them, what will it take for me to get a 10K raise? If they do not respond in an encouraging way, then look at other jobs in the market. In fact, studies show that it's easier to get a raise by moving to a new job than to get a pay rise from your current one. So know your worth. If you're not getting properly compensated, then don't be afraid to move to another place for a higher salary. There is no loyalty in the workplace. They wouldn't hesitate to let you go if the roles were reversed and they don't need you anymore. But of course, you need to continue to upskill yourself so that you are valuable to a company and they will hire you. So consider any courses you can take to improve your CV to make yourself more desirable to employers. Another way to increase your income is to start a side hustle. When I say side hustle, I don't mean a second job where you report to an employer. I mean, you could do that too and that will certainly help you to reach your FIRE number. However, with a side hustle, you own 100% of it and you get 100% of the commission. Ideally, it will be something that you are passionate about because in the beginning, you probably won't be paid much but as your reputation grows, your income will increase exponentially. For example, if you're good at graphic design, you can become a freelancer and create thumbnails for a content creator. Or you can become a video editor. 
or you could become a content creator yourself. You could start a YouTube channel like me, or if you're a bit shy to show your face, you could start a blog or a faceless channel. In this beautiful digital age of internet, there are so many side hustles you could do that can make you a lot of extra money. There are so many opportunities to make money out there, guys. You just have to be willing to find it. If an online side hustle isn't your thing and you want to be more hands-on, you could start something like a window cleaning business, walk around your neighborhood and knock on some doors and ask if they need their windows cleaned, or if they want you to mow their lawn. You will be surprised how much people are willing to pay for services that they don't enjoy doing themselves. And who knows, maybe your side hustle will one day become your main hustle. That's the dream, right? And this could be your golden ticket to early retirement. Having said all this about earning more money, it's not a free pass for you to spend whatever you want. Reducing your expenses is still important. You need to be reasonable, guys. Sure, you could enjoy your $5 coffees, but do you really need 10 different TV subscriptions? And do you really need to buy that brand new car to impress your neighbor when you can buy a perfectly fine secondhand Toyota Corolla that serves the same purpose? And do you really need all four bedrooms in your house when you could rent out the remaining rooms and potentially live there for free? If you want to achieve fire quicker, why not increase your income and reduce your expenses? I would encourage you to sit down and go through your bank and credit card statements. Then write down all your current expenses and put them into a needs versus wants column. Then really question yourself if you really want all the items on the wants column. You would be surprised how much crap you pay for that you hardly ever use. If you're paying for something that's not serving a purpose or bringing you happiness, then out the window it goes. And after you finish all this, set up an appropriate budget and follow it. Life is about choices, guys. The more disciplined you are, the faster you'll achieve fire. Step three, invest in income producing assets. Your investment portfolio is the key to retiring early. The faster your portfolio hits your fire number, the sooner you can retire. So what should you invest in? Well, the most popular choice in the FIRE community is shares and ETFs. You could also achieve FIRE through investing in real estate, but for this video, I'll focus on shares. And usually dividend shares or ETFs are the most popular investment for FIRE because you can use the annual dividends that you receive to fund your expenses. To invest in shares, you will need to open an online brokerage account. These days, we Aussies are spoiled with a lot of choices when it comes to online brokers. I'll put some of the most popular ones on the screen here and I'll leave it up to you to select the one that suits you best. In the end, it doesn't really matter which one you pick, they all do similar jobs. It usually comes down to who's offering the best fees at the time. For example, I'm currently using Stake because they have the best fees at the time to invest in Aussie ETFs. And I've done multiple reviews on some of these brokers and I'll leave a link down below in the description if you're interested to know more. After you select a broker, you'll need to decide what shares to invest in. Now there are a few choices here. I'm not going to tell you exactly what to invest in, but I'll show you some of the popular combinations that other Australians in the FIRE community are investing in. It seems the most popular choice is the VAS versus VGS combination. If you want to keep it super simple in one ETF, you can look at VDHG, which is an all-in-one ETF that basically covers everything that VAS and VGS offers. And by the way, you don't have to stick to just Vanguard. There are other alternatives like A200, IVV, and DHHF, which have different ETF providers but track very similar things. So please research all the available options out there and pick the one that best suits your strategy. Another popular option for the FIRE community are LICs like AFI and Argo. These particular LICs were mentioned by Scott Pape in his famous book, The Barefoot Investor. LICs are similar to ETFs in that they invest in similar companies. The main difference is LICs are actively managed, so the weighting or the selection of some of the companies may be a bit different. And the unique thing about LICs is that they usually pay out dividends that are 100% franked, so you may receive a tax credit during tax time. Franking credits are unique to Australia as the companies paying their dividends are taxed differently. So as Aussie investors, we can enjoy this small tax advantage. And just a quick disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor and the information in this video is not financial advice. I am not recommending you to buy these ETFs. I'm just showing you what other people in the FIRE community are doing so you can do your own research. If you would like financial advice that is catered to your situation, then please see a financial advisor. Having said all that, let's move on. Step four, use Australian tax laws to your advantage. In Australia, the government encourages investing and there are a few Aussie tax laws that you can take advantage of to achieve FIRE faster. The first one is the First Home Super Saver Scheme, otherwise known as the FHSS Scheme for short. If you want to achieve FIRE, then having your own home will go a long way to helping you get there. This scheme allows you to save money for your first home through your super, which you can later withdraw to buy a house. You can make up to 15k of voluntary contributions every year. Then when you are ready to buy a house, you can withdraw up to 50k for your house deposit. So it's better to make contributions for at least 3 years before withdrawing to enjoy the full benefit. Let me show you an example of how this will work. Eric earns 70k a year and he wants to buy his first house. Option 1, he can save his money outside of super. Let's say he saves 15k in a year by keeping it in a bank account. Since he is in the third tax bracket, he has to pay his marginal tax rate of 34.5%, which is $5,175. Option 2, Eric decides to save 15k with the first home super saver scheme. He would initially pay 15% instead of his marginal rate of 34.5% while the money is inside his super. So this comes to $2,250. When he goes to withdraw this 15%, the tax will be the usual 34.5% minus the 30% offset. So he would be only taxed at 4.5%, which is $675. So overall, he saves $2,250 by using the first home super saver scheme. And if he saves the maximum 50K using the FHSS scheme, he will save $7,500 overall. So the advantages of using this scheme is that one, you save on tax, 
And two, you stay faster on a house deposit, which will help you achieve fire faster. Please note, you can only use the voluntary contributions you made into your super for your house deposit. You won't be able to access the normal super that your employer pays you as part of your salary. Also, don't forget to use the first homeowner grant when you buy your first home. This is a one-off grant by the government that helps new home buyers. So you'll receive around 10K or more, depending on which state you live in. The next tax rule you can use is debt recycling. Debt recycling is a strategy where you turn your non-tax deductible debt into tax deductible debt. So you're essentially turning bad debt into good debt. According to the ATO, if you borrow money to buy shares or related investments from which you earn dividends or other accessible income, you can claim a deduction for the interest you pay. Having a home loan allows you to use the equity or any excess money you have to save on tax when you invest in income producing assets. You can use the existing equity you have in your principal place of residence to borrow more money from the bank, then use that money to invest in income producing assets like dividend shares. Then use the dividends you receive to pay off your original non-tax deductible home loan. Then you can redraw your money and repeat the cycle again until all your non-tax deductible debt becomes tax deductible debt. So until you turn all your bad debt into good debt. So you are recycling the bad debt into good debt, hence the name. This helps you pay off your home loan faster while also allowing you to claim a tax deduction. You could also use any excess money you have to debt recycle. For example, say you have a 500k home loan and 20k cash which you plan to use to invest in shares. So here are your two options. Option one, you don't debt recycle. You go ahead and invest that 20k into some dividend shares. You'll have to pay your marginal tax rate whenever you get paid dividends. Option two, you use a debt recycling strategy. You ask your bank to refinance your current home loan into two portions. Loan one is 480k and loan two is 20k. You then pay off loan two completely with your 20k in cash, then immediately redraw it. You have now borrowed money from the loan. You then use that 20k to buy dividend shares or ETFs. You will still pay your marginal tax rate on the dividends. However, you can now claim the interest on the amount borrowed to invest in income producing assets. So if your interest rate for loan two was 5%, during tax time, you could claim a 5% tax deduction on the 20k. Then you use the dividends to pay off loan one, which is your bad debt. And ideally, you keep your loan two as an interest only loan to maximize your tax deduction. You wanna focus all your energy into paying off the bad debt, AKA loan one. Think of loan two as good debt since it's your tax deductible portion. This will potentially help you save thousands in tax and pay off your home loan faster. Again, the quicker your home is paid off, the faster you can achieve fire. And if you wanna learn more about debt recycling, I have made a previous video about it, which I'll link in the description. The next tax rule you can take advantage of is salary sacrifice. Salary sacrifice means you make voluntary extra contributions into your super in addition to the super already being paid by your employer. Now using salary sacrifice to achieve fire is a bit controversial because on paper, it will seem counterintuitive. By making extra payments into your super, you are essentially locking up your money until preservation age, which is about 60. Some people argue, how does super help with retiring early when you can't even access it until you're 60? Others argue that super is still the most optimal way to invest for retirement due to the tax savings. And my opinion is somewhere in the middle as it depends on what type of fire lifestyle you are after. If it's lean fire where you plan to live a minimalistic life on a small budget and the absolute priority is to retire as early as possible, then salary sacrifice may not be the best option since you could have used extra payments to invest outside of super to reach your fire number quicker. However, if you want to achieve something like Coast Fire where the retirement age is a bit more flexible and you want to maximize your returns to be as comfortable as possible when you retire, then it makes sense to salary sacrifice. The main advantage of salary sacrifice is the tax savings. If you make voluntary contributions into your super, you are taxed at 15% compared to the higher marginal rate you would be taxed if you used the same money to invest outside of super. Let me use an example. Ben earns 75K per year. He's deciding whether to salary sacrifice $5,000 or use the money to buy some ETFs outside of super. In column one, Ben does not salary sacrifice. In column two, Ben does salary sacrifice. As you can see from the table, Ben is charged a higher tax rate on his income in option one due to being charged his marginal tax rate of 34.5% for his full taxable income of 75K. He will then use the 5K to invest in ETFs outside of super. In option two, he is charged the same marginal rate of 34.5% for 70K. However, he is only charged 15% on the remaining 5K that he has chosen to salary sacrifice. So he would save $975 per year if he chooses the salary sacrifice. The more he contributes into super, the more tax he will save. You can make up to $27,500 in concessional contributions per year without going over the limit. And this already includes the super that your employer is paying. So if you are thinking of salary sacrificing, have a chat with your payroll officer and make sure you calculate your maximum contribution without going over the limit. And if you're interested to know more, I have made a full video about salary sacrificing, which I'll link in the description. And FYI, the main difference between FIRE in Australia and the US is the retirement accounts. In the US, you are able to access your retirement accounts early if you pay a fee. So your overall portfolio is not restricted to your age. While in Australia, our retirement accounts cannot be accessed until we reach preservation age, which is 60 for most people. So if you're Australian, it makes it a more difficult choice. Do you choose to retire at an early age where you are healthy enough to travel and do more physical activities? Or do you choose to maximize your money and wait until you're a bit older, but with a less able body to fully enjoy everything? It's a choice that you'll have to make. You're either sacrificing more time in your youth or more money to enjoy overall. It's kind of hard to enjoy one without the other. If you can't make up your mind, you could do a bit of both, which is basically close fire. You could concentrate on maxing out your super, and once you have enough, you can leave it there to compound. 
So even without additional contributions, your super portfolio will continue to grow to support your retirement. Then you save and invest enough outside your super to last you until you reach preservation age at 60. There are other types of fire you can try depending on your situation, which I'll leave on the screen here. So just pause the screen if you wanna have a look. Step five, retire early. Congratulations, it was a long slog, but you have reached your fire number and now you can choose to retire. You can choose to spend more time with family, focus on your hobbies, or maybe go backpacking in Asia. You basically enjoy your life without having to think about work. However, what normally happens is people start to get bored of their newfound free time. Sure, sipping umbrella drinks on a beach in Thailand sounds great, but after a few months, it will get boring. Naturally, humans will thrive when they have a purpose in life. Humans are usually more happy when they have a purpose in life. So after an extended period of doing nothing, you may choose to voluntarily go back to work, but this time it's for a job or cause that you are passionate about. The difference is, this time it's your choice. Enjoy your new stress-free life. So to summarize, achieving fire is not easy. The concept is easy to understand, but you need a lot of discipline and hard work to achieve it. For the average Australian, achieving fire before 30 is not realistic. Not unless you're willing to live on a super lean budget and eat instant noodle for every meal. That sounds pretty good actually. The few that will achieve fire this early are those who started their own successful business, have an extremely high salary, got really lucky in the stock market, or won the lottery. Probably less than 5% of Australians can achieve these things. However, it is very much possible for most Aussies to achieve fire in their mid-30s or early 40s if you are frugal with your money, invest regularly, and have found ways to make additional income outside your full-time job. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, comment the word avocado down below so I know you're one of the legends who made it this far. And if you're new around here, what are you waiting for, mate? Subscribe to the channel and join the community. I have plenty more videos like this coming out in the future and you don't want to miss them. And if you'd like to learn more about how to invest in Australia so you can begin your FIRE journey, check out this video on screen where I show you a beginner's guide on how to invest in Australian stock market. And as always, thank you for watching. I appreciate you and I'll see you in the next video.